Hey everyone, today we're going to be building a light switch ultra and I want to take you through what I do to build and the quads I use to race and hopefully you can learn something or teach me something in the comments. So uh, this will be kind of a more low key video so I'll try and add a lot of timestamps in case there's any sections that could uh, benefit you or help you out. So here's kind of the bomb of the build. Obviously any other piece parts can be substituted for personal preference but this is what I found to work for myself. So I really like running the 533 light switch ultra frame. Um, I had been on the light switch V2s and that's a great frame as well, but this one, it, it flies different. It did feel locked in. So I'm switching most of my fleet to light switch ultra with a slightly wider plate it adds like half a gram for extra protections. They, the stack and for the flight controller, I'm using the Fox Air V4 MPU 6000 20 by 20, the ESC, the 60 amp slim. You can use the 45 amp. I had a few of them catch fire last year, so I did. I am opting for the 60 amp slims now. Uh, the motor, I was on heads up uh, 1960 kV motors all of last year, but I am updating to the 2070 kVs for a little bit higher headspace there. And I just use a throttle limit to bring them back down to the equivalent. So I'm hoping I'm I'm assuming that'll work out fine. And then the battery, I I prefer Dogcom over Tattoo because I was losing cells like crazy on Tattoo, and the Dogcoms have just been lasting longer for me. Uh, the cameras, the Nano 90 HD Zero with the upgraded 1.8 millimeter lens. Um, I've been ordering those directly from HD Zero because they've been keeping them in stock pretty well. The VTX is the Race V3 board because it can be powered off five volts. Uh, the RX, I really like the Foxy or ELRS light chips. Um, they're really compact and the ceramic antenna fits really good kind of on the back standoff on a 3D print I use. And uh, kind of right above that, I use the Lumineer Axi Micro V2 antenna. Really compact, small antenna that's given me great signals and I haven't really had any issues with them. And then the battery uh, pads the Omagrip light. And then a pyro drone strap along with the waffle cap cap, which is kind of just like a PCB board to solder your capacitor on. You can solder motor wires to extend it and put the cap wherever you want on the frame. And just kind of preface this, the, the cost is really high on this build. Um, but if you order in bulk, do group orders, you can always bring down the cost on that. And what I've actually been paying for this is more in the lines of like 420, 430 bucks per quad. So I, I definitely have not been playing full retail price. And I'm not sponsored at all. It's just kind of getting in on group buys and getting good deals on Black Friday. So to start with this build, we're going to use the 25 millimeter long screws along with the 23 millimeter standoffs. It also comes with a set of 20 millimeter standoffs, but um, I found it a lot easier and cleaner build just to use the 23s and I didn't find the weight savings matter that much. And also these uh, two millimeter knurled nuts you can get off pyro drone or race day quads. I found those to be work way better than the ones that come with the ultra kit. So the ones that come with the ultra kit actually um, have been stripping out for me. They're the plastic nylon screws. So I highly recommend picking up some of these as well and uh, just kind of get them three quarters of the way on the standoff screw or the stack screw. And then apply a little bit of thread locker in there. A little Loctite. Um, I'm thinking this is a 242 one. And then put a little dab on there and clean up any of the excess. I have to get it tightened down. Um, I, I don't crank it super tight or else you could go through the aluminum threadings there. But you want it tight enough uh, so it doesn't come loose in any vibrations in the frame. Because that's the issue I was having before. There's a lot of vibrations from the nylon nuts stripping out. So yeah, clean it up there and then um, rinse and repeat four times. And then after you get those four put on, you'll take the spacers between the two stacks that kind of lock together in this ultra frame, super easy to assemble. But the problem is you can't get the strap on after you have it assembled. So you need to make sure you put the battery strap in the slot before you get too far into the build or else you have to slide it back open. So place it face down, the strap face down there, and then close it up and make sure you have the... Uh, counter bore holes facing up and then I do the compression screw on one side just to get it started and everything held together and this frame's pretty straightforward to put together um, so you'll take the two arms slide them in they fit on that um, the spacer so they slide onto the spacer and then stack on each other seems kind of the standard way to do a frame keeps it super tight 
so very easy to assemble unfortunately it is two screws for an arm change but i think it's a good price to pay for um how stiff it stays so get those tightened up get all four arms installed and after this it's actually um important note this this frame is um the direction is important so the esc only fits on one way and same with the camera uh, relative to the stacks so you want to make sure you get the esc assembled on the right side if you're not assembling it with the standoffs in place and for the esc i actually found this waffle waffle cap um kind of header pcb um so the the capacitor wires fit right through the slots solder them in and then take your extra motor wires from your motors solder those onto the pads and then solder directly to your esc and um pretty straightforward cap assembly so i've found these things out and i found those really work because i like to tape them to my battery leads so i use this uh gaffers tape i think it's called um just kind of like a fabricy like tape and i found it really easy to work with and you can tear off any thickness you want if you buy the thicker one inch width so just tear off a strand um, wrap it up i like to kind of tape it sideways to my battery lead like that i found that works pretty well for me at least so going into the wiring diagram um, for the Foxier uh, V4 board MPU 6000, I want to be using that with the Race V3 because this flight control only has a 5 volt rail. There's no other voltages, so you really need to be using the Race V3 or the Whoop Light board. But there's some noise with the carbon interference there, so I recommend the V3 board of the HT Zero. And it's pretty simple wiring here, only eight wires. So for the top, um, on the top of the flight controller, I like to wire it up to UART5. So the blue wire RX5 is going to go to TX on the HG0 board. And TX5 on the flight controller is going to go to R on the HG0 board. And then ground to ground and voltage to five volts on the flight controller. And then on the bottom side, I like to use UART2. Um, you can use UART1 on the top. Um, I just think I like running the wires under the bottom of the flight controller. I think it's cleaner uh, between the flight controller and the ESC. So I wire the Foxier um, ELRS thing. I have it on the back standoff in a 3D print, which I'll provide later. And 5 volt goes 5 volt, ground goes ground, TX to RX, and RX to TX. So pretty simple eight wires here. Now, a quick tip um, you can actually, if you have a hooded, uh, D6 power supply. Um, you can actually use it as a power supply and power up your ELRS chip before you wire it into your flight controller. So um, when you're messing with your quad on the bench, you don't actually have to have it powered. So if you're here, you'll go into input settings. Um, I like to do five volts, just put it at one amp max because this thing won't pull more than one amp. And then you start, and then now it's outputting five volts. So you can use your uh, charger as a power supply. And then I'll plug it in. And uh, after wiring it to this XT30, and now I can bind it up. So after you get your letter strip bound and everything with the bind phrase, um, I like to measure out the wires for that UR2 location. So clip them, and after I measure them out to kind of that location where the URTs will be, tin up the wires. Um, here I have the flight controller mounted upside down just to kind of hold it to make it easy soldering in place. And so now got those all soldered up, flip the flight controller back over to do the HG0 board and get this, get the power to the HG0 board, get the RX and TX wired in. And then um, I actually can formal code everything too. So the MG chemicals can formal code and I'll put a link in the description. Um, you don't, you want to make sure not to get this stuff in any connectors or anything like barometers that could affect readings like that. I don't care about my barometer on my flight controller. So, um, I actually conform will code the flight controller, ESC, ELRS chip, um, just any solder pads I use frequently. I don't bother putting any in on, um, uh, but general stuff that could short out easily. It's just an easy preventative thing to do. Um, now stuff is kind of nasty, so we're not going to washing your hands after you do it. Um, but you can also, um... Make sure to buy the ones with fluorescent in there. You can buy a black light to easily see where you've painted it on um, because I am shining a black light onto it right now. And if you don't do that, it's kind of hard to tell what you've hit and what you haven't. Um, I think the ESCs already do co come from control coded. 
Um, so I didn't really bother with the ESC too much, uh, but I do do the flight controller and the HD zero board. Just make sure to not get in any connectors. It's probably a smart thing to actually plug in the connectors before you do this, but I was being careful and kind of painting it on around those. In here, I put a little bit on the waffle cap cap. Um, I might actually put a little electrical tape over that too, just to prevent it um, from shortening anything. And then um, do the flight controller here. A um, little sped up footage of getting it around. Um, like I said, the, the solder pads that I use frequently, I don't typically put um, any conformal coating on. Uh, just the main components on the board that uh, would likely be prone to shorting. It's kind of what I hit. And using the standoffs as kind of a mini table along with a little black light. I think I got this black light is just a cheap like six or seven dollar thing. Takes a few triple A's. And uh, I do this to most of my quads. So easy preventative maintenance thing to do. And then here's actually the 3D printer I use for the LRS chip. Um, as you notice, the ceramic container only has one side. Probably don't need to do this. It's just TPU, but I cut out a little slot for the antenna on the other side too because Fox here has the dual side ceramic antennas. So make a little cut there um, for both the ceramic antennas. Cut it out and fold it back and make the cut there. And then obviously after the conformal coating is dried, kind of wiggle it up in there, being careful not to crack the wires off, but sorry, a little out of focus there. And I have found this to be the cleanest way because I don't like putting it right up against carbon. I mean, it is right next to my VTX antenna, but I put it down on the standoff, uh, tuck the wires up under the flight controller and then have the HG zero board um, the wires long enough so that I can assemble it with the VTX on the front and the MIPI cable facing the back. Now the Axi 2 uh, antennas, the light ones um, with the lighter cabling do come with this little latch antenna. I've actually had that short on my boards before, so I hate this little thing. I've had it ruin a board on me before, so I take this thing off and use B7000 um, kind of jeweler's glue to hold it in place and it's really easy to like peel it off if you like kind of grab it and then lightly twist it don't yank and pull straight back because you'll pull the components off with but then you lightly kind of rotate the b7000 off if you need to swap an antenna and i found that to uh, hold it great for me and i've never actually had an antenna pop off after doing this so put the antenna in the standoff um kind of twist it because it's slightly too long down in the slot kind of don't fold it, but kink it a little there to get some of the wire down in there. Pop the ULF down. And like I said, B7000 glue. I love this stuff. I think a grower pointed me to this, but this stuff has worked super well for me. It is like, uh, I think it's like half a day dry time, but the stuff does work great. It's kind of rubbery. And now for my HD Zero camera... I actually don't like uh, it's this the, the ultra build is so close to the back of the stack and the camera smashing your e the cable between your ESC and flight controller. I take off the back panel and then um, just B7000 down the little MIPI because it comes with screws to actually take off that back panel and shorter ones. Just use kind of a naked camera. So B7000 the sides of the MIPI on. Um, I like the M1.8. Um, lens for the hd0 nano 90 i can't stand the fish eye of the normal one so i pay the extra whatever seven ten bucks for the upgraded lens on all my builds and then tighten that down on there and then um i also conformal coat the back of this camera make sure not to get it on the camera sensor you ruin the camera if you get the conformal coating on that sensor probably that little um chip there probably shouldn't have conformal coated the little uh, gold chip on the side but It'll probably be all right. So the next step will be to flash the HD0 firmware onto the VTX. Go to hd0.com. Go to support. Download. And then you're going to need two links here. So the first one you're going to need is the utility for the um, VTX flasher. So VTX programmer. So you'll want this one. Um, whatever the latest version is flash there. And so you'll download that. And when you download that, it'll look like HD0 program where you unzip that folder. And you just have a little of this. 
and you run that and you might have to come in here and update some of the drivers and run that setup tool installed in there to get it working. Um, but then you'll have this little tool here. And the next thing you're going to want to do is come up to the firmware. So the latest firmware files and you're going to come and grab the latest um, actually my goggles. And so you want your VTX to match whatever the file kind of associated with your goggles are. Um, so I think I have this one. So I'm actually just going to use this file that I already have downloaded. So after we do that, I'll come here and see. Yeah. So I have that. This is the revision I have in my goggles right now. So that's the one I want to use. So I'm going to use the race V3 is what we're running. So you'll unzip that file, grab the race V3. And then we have our local folder right there. So I'm going to plug in the quad or the little firmware version. And you'll see the toggle pop up there. So plug it in. You'll get the five volt power to your flight or to the VTX. And after that, we're going to choose a version. Um, I don't actually do this. I do choose a VTX. We'll go to race V3 and you want to load the firmware local. So with that, we'll just come up here and make sure we have the same folder. And so we're using the race V3. You need to make sure you have the firmware right. We'll open. And then you just click update. And after you see it's connected, you get progress bar. And a little confirmation of success. And then unplug it. And easy as that. All right, so now onto the beta flight setup. So it, kind of when I set up my quads, I like to have them in this state here. So uh, everything wired up except the top plate. And I don't have any 3D print mount for my camera just quite yet. Is that way to focus the lens to the very last step of the build. So what I'll do here is um, get her plugged in, get beta flight kicked off. And um, to, we're going to be putting the kind of the go-to race firmware on there, the CAC from Lamone and with the RPM limiter uh, put on there. Um, so we'll set that to the side. So we go all of our classic warnings. So the first thing I do is on my builds is uh, we're going to go to, no, we're going to go to presets and then save backup. And we're gonna go to data. This is where I keep all my drone configs of various things I've built and torn down over the years. So probably should get this more organized, but we're gonna call this, uh, we'll call it, um, I think this is HD zero H seven. So we'll call this uh, H8 in the lifetime of my H0 quads racers. So I'll call it there and we'll call it um, factory flash. And then I just label it the version of beta flight. So 440, just so I have a version I can kind of go back to. And so we have that. And now we're gonna go flash to the CAC firmware. So to be able to do this, you have to go uh, show release candidates, enable expert mode, and we're gonna to go to development and then hit auto detect and your board should pop up there, the Fox here. And we're gonna go down to this special release by Lamone. Lamone has a whole video walking through everything. Uh, that's a great watch to just gen generically know everything and um yeah so then load firmware online we're gonna flash her we agree sign our life away and then it erases the chip it'll flash it let that sit for a second And Lamone did a really great job on this. Like all the quick menu stuff is super useful. And it's required if you're planning to participate in any freedom spec. Um, I know some micro tank train racers are starting to use this as well. So I personally flash this, this version to all my race quads right now. 
All right, so it looks like it was successful. We'll connect, and you always want to apply custom defaults. Connect, and so it gives us the classic list kind of checklist we got to work through. So I have it sitting flat right now, so we'll go and calibrate the accelerometer. Um, go to ports tab. So on ports, um, we did our serial RX on two, and then we want MSP display port on UR5 um, for what we have HG0 wired up to. And so then this is our ELRS chip. We're going to save and reboot. And go through configuration. So now um, we'll keep this 8K here, turn off the barometer. I'm going to call this. Uh, I name my start name my quads H8 um, Ultra I'll call it craft name T Bell then I put the number of quad that I'm building in the life cycle of stuff I've killed I just keep indexing up arm angle go to 180 just kind of rapid fire through these things um i'm not going to use any leds i use the um cobweb strips anyways so if i want to do that i hook them up to a battery lead if i need those for a race so we'll skip that um one thing i forgot to check is to make sure i know this flight controller so we have the board orientation the right way but you can kind of see um if we hide my eyes here and if we tilt it forward and kind of come this way so the board is oriented the right way just as a gut check so we don't have to rotate anything so power battery um for racing sometimes we gotta finish those laps so i up it to 4.4 so if i do ch overcharge a little bit to 4.3 um i won't get any high battery warnings or it'll think it's a 7s battery so i just default there at your own risk with that. Um, go to presets. Um, actually, first, we're going to go to motors just to enable it to do some stuff. So we're going to D-Shot 600 because we're running an F7. F props out. Um, Bidirectional D-Shot. We have 14 poles. We're going to hit save and reboot. We'll come back to that later. Um, but we're going to go to presets. And type in ELRS. I personally use 500. So I've had good luck with 500. So we're going to use that. And we're going to go to race feed forward settings. Um, and then we kind of already set that up. We put the serial and UR2 in the ports tab. So I'm just going to leave that unchecked. And so I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Pick. Save and reboot. And what I like to do is before I flash a tune, um, there are tunes on here like uh, Karate, um, Karate Race Success. So usually I'll flash this on with heads up motors, but with champs motors, I'm a little more nervous. I'll just start melding stuff. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on default beta flight and then uh, try the loose version of this. And what you can do is take the master multiplier down, but I'm just going to leave them as default beta flight for now just to get them flying. But karate success is if that's the tune you want to use, I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting for the champs motors. Um, pit tuning, put in your rates. Uh, I go, I go beta flight rates. Normally I'd copy them in with CLI stuff. We'll go 0.65. I uh, guess you can't copy and paste those. So 0.65. And I do a little bit of spreading it out on the yaw. And that is my rates. And then I'm just going to throw a 90% throttle cap on there just for the time being. So we'll hit save. Hit the receiver. We're going to do telemetry. We want crossfire, serial UART. Um, I've already bound anything, so it should go. The rest of that I'm going to leave default because we already flashed the earless preset. Um, we're going to go to modes. We're going to add range. And this is why I enable the motors so I can add the flipper. Flip over after crash. 
flip over after crash. And then um, sometimes I do add a beeper. So we'll add a beeper and throw this there. Hide them. And you notice we don't have a pit mode. HG0, you do not want to use the beta flight pit mode. You want to actually use the zero watt mode. So HG0 is a given zero watt mode. And um, we will get to that in a second. So we'll come to motors. We'll, we'll work out the motor direction in a minute. For your video transmitter, you'll have all this here. So uh, if we go to presets and then we go to HD0 VTXs. Um, set HD OSD. So this will set the the grid matrix for your OSD um, for the size of it, and then map to display port. Um, we'll do UART five. We already we already checked that, but we'll just do it again for the preset. Um, and then we need to select all VTX except freestyle. So we do not need to do it because we're not unlocking it. And then we're just going to come down, pick, agree. Save and reboot. And sometimes I've uh, not had that taken before, so sometimes I'll still have to do the um, MSP display for it. So if we go to hd0.com, if you ever have any questions, you go to support, download, and then hd0 VRX user manual. And if you ever have any questions, you can come here, scroll down, and find a lot of that info there let me get what i'm exactly looking for so when we set it up there's a cli command line so that preset should have done this but sometimes it doesn't take so i'm just gonna copy that over go back to beta flight cli type in set osd underscore display port underscore device equal to msp and whenever you use this you always have to hit save and then we'll hit save and now we should have all of our hd0 stuff ready so we can hit power 25 hit save so one important note is real in relation to that power level um hd0 is unique in that it can go to zero instead of just like a pit with a lot of analog gear I think HD0 and Immersion RC boards are the only ones that can do that. Um, but to kind of explain how that works is the user manual walks it through and it'll tell you what each of these are. So you'll you'll be writing a command. So across the input channel range. So like when you set your inputs on whatever aux switch you want to use, I use the six-way button on my radio. So buttons like one through three or buttons one through three or whatever. Um or one through five or something like that, whatever I set the aux range to be, all will be setting them to zero, uh, zero milliwatts. So let me find it. This is the default of a quad I already have set up. So as you can see, the VTX here, um, the first one is index. So you can just index it. So we want our first range to be 900 to 1300. So, for example, on our modes tab, 900 to 1300. Whenever the switch is in that position, it would trigger that. Um, position two, or position, the second position, because we're going to start at zero, uh, will be 13 to 17. So, 13 to 17. So, anything in that range would trigger that second one. Um, and then in the, th the last position, the third, uh, the 17 to 2100. Um, 17 to 2100 is what would trigger me to be in pit mode. So for example, so that's your index and then your aux channel. So your second number needs to be your aux channel minus one. So per the user mail, aux channel minus one. So in your radio, if it shows, um, channel eight, which is, four so that's confusing i'll show i'll show up a little screenshot in a second along with the video um but in your tx 16s channel four which is actually three because you do four minus one that's your aux channel and then 
VTX band. Um, I do all, I control the band and channel through my ELRS Lewis script. So we'll worry about the band and channel layers. So we're going to leave those blank. We're going to leave this at zero. And then the third number is actually VTX power, which is what we care about. Um, so to show an example, to explain that, uh, I want to go to video transmitter. So if we have it, so our numbers one, two, and three. So if we set it to three, it'll be zero milliwatts broadcasted. So that good HD zero pit mode. And then the one will be 25 milliwatts. And for a race, you get your quad hammered if you're in 200. So why even have that in the table? Don't even risk it. If your quad disconnects and you don't have your fail safe set up right, it'll default to the middle position. And you guess what? You'd be broadcasting at 200 milliwatts and blowing everyone out. So I don't even include it in the table. What I recommend doing is having, you can just do two or three lines. This is exactly the table I use. So I have it aux, um, I have it as channel four. So four minus one is three. And then the power on this, this number here, so the VTX power, we're going to leave it one and one. So if the buttons are anywhere in that range, so if the buttons um, in this VTX mode, which we're actually doing through the CLI, um, so just for example, the flip bar with Cratch, if it's anywhere here to here, it'll be at 25 milliwatts. And then if I flip the switch in this range, it'll be at zero milliwatts, which is that third position there. So this is what I'm going to copy and paste into the CLI. And you have to have your VTX table set up before you do this command. So I'm going to put enter and then save. And now it's kind of hidden in the background, but if you save the default or presets save backup, you can, it'll spit out this file, which is an example of a quad I already have configured. And you can start copying and pasting and saving all the stuff from old quads in the CLI. I would not paste tunes from previous um, previous versions of Betaflight because they don't always transfer over. So um, on to the next thing. So that's the big one is being able to go pit mode on HD0 through that um, CLI commands there. And how I like to set up my OSD. So we already set up the OSD grid. So the the HD OSD will actually set the grid type to during the using the preset there. The H0 preset will set it up correctly. So we're just gonna center things here. And I go pilot name which I think everyone knows how to set up an OSD. So instead of doing that, I am just going to actually come up and look for everything that says OSD. So this is actually the command that HDOSD preset sets up. So the canvas width and height doesn't hurt to do it again. Um, and the OSD display port for the HD zero. So we're going to set all of this OSD elements that I already have set up. And then I'm just going to go to CLI. And then we'll go to OSD tab. And the OSD should be set up how I like it. So we'll, we'll see in the goggles. If it, it didn't look at translate right. So that might have been an older version of a quad. But pretty much the gist of how I like it set up. Um, I've stopped using link quality. I've trusted the little ELRS trips well enough now. So I'm just going to set it up like that and we'll check it in the goggles later to make sure everything's in frame. Pull that in a little bit more. So now we're going to move on to the motors. Um, one thing I always do, this is actually the first time I plug in the quad. So in the past I've used smoke detector, but the motors almost always hit it. So what I do is see if I can focus on there. I get it always set it to this. So the little beeper mode. Sorry if that was inverted there. Um, the continuity check mode. And I just do a quick, do a quick little probe of the quad. You'll hear a little beep because the capacitor. And then just make sure I have nothing wired backwards. Some of the stuff's conformal codes, so you can't check it. Um, but just a main thing to make sure I'm not gonna blow up the ESC. 
and it's pretty safe because I didn't wire any of the motor pads or repin the ESC this time. And I'm not getting anything there. Whereas if I did do a ground somewhere, um, like a ground pad that's not conformal coated, I did conformal coat most of this, but, uh, yeah. So pro that I probe it most times to a quick continuity check and then we should be good to go. And then I've blown up a capacitor on myself before. So we'll see how this goes. No smoke. So it looks like we're good so far. Um, we're going to plug that in. Now you do want to kind of move quickly here so it doesn't overheat or anything. Um, with the motor tabs here, um, next we're going to set up motor direction. So we're going to reorder the motors. Understand this. Hit start. And we see that. So we see this guy is spinning. So I'm going to hit the one back here. It's going to kind of walk me through it. It's a good gut check. So we're going to hit save. Oops. Already read. Mo reorder them. Then we're going to do motor direction. I understand. And I like doing them individually. So for some reason they weren't spinning in there on the motor direction, but this one is going correct. One's going correct. Then we're gonna do two. Two's going correct. Let's try three. Three is correct. And then we'll try four. So actually all my motor directions were already correct. It might even be as I was in a 3S battery that plugged in there. But um before things get a little too hot, like on the VTX, I'm going to stop the motors and we're going to call that good. So then we're going to actually unplug for a minute. Just unplug right there. And then before we get too far, we're going to go over the transmitter tab and set that to zero, which probably should have been done before I did the motors tab. But before we move on, I'm going to go to... Um, drone software, BL Heli 32. And I'm assuming everyone knows how to download BL Heli 32. We're going to go there. Well, oops. You should have, um, beta flight closed first. So I'm not going to update. Probably should, but whatever. So going to power, get it back on. Absolutely no props on. Probably shouldn't have had screws on for this. But we're going to read the setup there. So everything good. Didn't see anything wrong. Got the correct ESC 32.9, which is a more recent one. So I'm just going to go with that. And what I like to do for all my ESCs is I go motor timing um, 23. And I go fixed 48 PWM frequency. So pull those up, write the setup. All the rights went okay. Check the overview went. So I wrote 23 degrees there and then 48 on all these. And you can see I didn't have to change any motor directions because the Fox here actually set up the ESC. So that a lot of times you don't have to change the motor directions, which is awesome. So. Now that we've updated that, heard it boot. So changes took effect. Close out of BL Heli 32. So now I have my quad plugged in here, um, hooked up to the different uh, things. We can see everything's going. So like we can arm, beeper works. So just kind of show um, some quick things, how the profile, how I have it set up here. So I have my, ELR, I, I call it 5R ELRS. And how I set up my profile is model key. And then we're going to go over and we're going to see, and this is what I was talking about the channels earlier. So we have our inputs, our normal mapping, and then channel five, I have it as arm channel six. I have is beep, which I have to this button, the shoulder button up here. And then, um, the turtle mode is this one to turtle. And then pit mode is actually this, these buttons here. So I have this set up and make sure you calibrate that 
because if you don't calibrate this, it's like a potentiometer too when you're going through your radio setup and calibration. So one thing I actually just noticed, um, the quad was actually going spastic up here and spinning around. So um, when that when the, what that happens is with the way I had my mapping set on my controller, if you need to do that, you might just need to change the mapping. So I got them corrected by going over to channel mapping and selecting the spectrum bottom one instead of the FR sky one. And now for actually setting up our ELRS Lewis script, um, the settings you want for the express LRS Lewis script here, um, maybe not what you want, but what I use are the 500 Hertz. Um, if you go to telemetry ratio, normally it'll be like standard 128. If you go to race, the race is what you want because the race one to 128, this it will turn off uh, telemetry once you actually start racing, which is really useful. Um, I don't use model match obviously. And then, um, TX power and then the VTX admin is big. So I finally got this working now that, um, I got my ELR stuff matching on the same firmware. I struggled with it last year, but it seems to be working consistently on my tiny trainers this year. So you can set your band channel and then pet the power level as a dash because we're controlling that up here with that, um, the, the switch we put in earlier through the CLA commands and um we're gonna do this and set this up and just leave it at that and then it should switch to r3 whenever we start our quad up or connect to it and next we're going to focus in the camera so here i kind of point the camera to wall ideally you could do this outside but it's really cold right now so i'm going to do it against this back wall so just kind of focusing in picking an object um go past the focal point, then work your way back till everything gets sharp and in focus. This is the best way I've found to do it. And then um, I kind of like to hold the, the lens and the camera locked in my fingers and take the tweezers and tighten that ring. And you do want to get really snug because vibrations will shake the, the lens out if you don't get this ring tight and kind of snug in there. So I'm taking the edge of a tweezer and just getting that ring snug in there. So now... Um, we want to go to race v1 so you'll enter the hd0 vtx menu which is both sticks in and down and you'll go down to the team race mode um put this at one so you always boot up in pit mode and then you actuate it back and forth to turn your video on after you plugged in the next is the Betaflight quick menu, which is on the CAC firmware. So you have all the options like VTX menu and all those other, which are really nice to have at the tip of your fingers. So with that, we just do the finishing things to button up the quad and pretty much take it out and fly. So I really uh, enjoy watching other build videos and picking up these tips and tricks at different races um, when you go out and see the different ways people build quads. So yeah, let me know what you think. If you have any other suggestions or tips and tricks, feel free to leave them in the comments. And yeah, let me know what you do or don't like about the build. And uh, I'm going to leave with some champs footage of my uh, C mains at Multi GP Champs. So appreciate it. Live on the tip. Well, two seconds back from the top two, top two